This presentation is called From the EEA to AREs, an Evolutionary Dispute. And evolutionary anthropology is a bundle of competing approaches, as is much of science. And among the competing approaches are evolutionary psychology and human behavioral ecology. There's a great deal that proponents of both of these approaches agree on, and that should not uh, be overlooked. So among the things they share is a natural science model of inquiry. And they both argue that the best way to uh, study human behavior is based on a natural science model, and we talked about that as involving a critical epistemology and a materialist ontology. Another thing they share is an evolutionary perspective, and this means they both make the argument that evolutionary theory provides a necessary and a sufficient basis for explaining human behavior. So both human behavioral ecology and evolutionary psychology argue that we don't need the social sciences and the idea of culture. Uh, not all evolutionary anthropologists agree with them on this. But just because uh, these two approaches share so much common ground um, does not mean that they're in complete agreement. And one of their biggest disagreements emerged in the 1990s when a psychologist named Donald Simmons started criticizing what he called Darwinian anthropology, uh, which is basically human behavioral ecology. Simmons is uh, best classified as an evolutionary psychologist, although he calls himself a Darwinian psychologist, and his specialty has been human sexuality and the evolution of human sexuality. Um, but Simmons argues, uh, like other evolutionary psychologists, that in contemporary situations, evolved behaviors will often be maladaptive. And that's a critical part of evolutionary psychology, or has been. On the other hand, human behavioral ecologists, uh, drawing on that tradition of animal behavioral ecology that starts with Nico Tinbergen, argue that contemporary human behavior is adaptive, at least in traditional societies, so that their studies of human behavior are premised on being able to study current survival value so there's two key points in Simmons' argument of, on this. And the first is that the present fitness consequence of a trait uh, can't play a role in explaining its existence. So you can't say that the way that a trait operates in the current environment explains how it evolved and came into existence. And this is because we don't live in the EEA. We don't live in the past. His second uh, key criticism there is that human behavioral ecology, much like the standard social science model, isn't terribly interested in psychological modules and that modular model of mind. Instead, it goes directly from behavioral consequences to their explanation. So he argues that this is just another form of psychological agnosticism and, of course, to evolutionary psychologists, that's not acceptable. Now, a response uh, developed by an anthropologist and human behavioral ecologist named William Irons, and he criticized this whole notion of the EEA, or Environment of Evolutionary Adaptation. He notes that evolutionary psychologists, in a very vague way, refer the EEA to the Pleistocene, which is roughly the last two and a half million years. And they say that during those two and a half million years, humans basically were hunter-gatherers and so have had a stable way of life for 99.9% .9 of human history. And then suddenly in the last 10,000 years, things have changed. And adaptations that evolved over that two and a half million year period uh, are now out of whack. And Iron's point, based on the work of anthropological archaeologists, is to argue that the Pleistocene was not this long, stable period, but a very dynamic period uh, full of changes. And so it doesn't make any sense to think of the Pleistocene in some 
uh, general sense is the EEA, the EEA has to be much more precise. And Irons then proposes another acronym and a what he calls adaptively relevant environments in the plural. So these are environments that are relevant to the evolution of specific traits. And he argues that different traits have different adaptively relevant environments. So evolution, as uh, biologists know, is mosaic. And what that means is that the different parts of our anatomy evolve at different times at different rates. Everything doesn't move in lockstep, and presumably behavior evolves in a mosaic fashion as well. And if we apply this to understanding past selective pressures, then this means that there's going to be different adaptively relevant environments for different adaptations. So we have to speak of environments and adaptations in the plural. An example of this is that the EEA of the human eye is the last 50 million years. It's a very old organ and it has a very long evolutionary history uh, in primates. On the other hand, the adaptively relevant environment of tolerance for drinking milk is just within the last 10,000 years in certain areas of the world. So in Europe and in East Africa, uh, people took to drinking the milk of cattle. And in those areas, people evolved tolerance to lactose. And that's a very recently evolved characteristic in the Adaptively relevant environment for lactose tolerant then is those areas where people were consuming milk in the last 10,000 years, whereas the adaptively relevant environment for the human eye is this much longer period, and most of its features were in place uh, millions of years ago. To William Iron's second point is that disruption of environments is also mosaic. So not all human societies are equally changed, and not all old adaptations are maladaptive in the contemporary world. So the argument that anthropologists make is that traditional societies, again like the Hadza, who are hunter-gatherers, have been less disrupted and less changed uh, than industrial societies, and in traditional societies you can still study behavior adaptively in ways with evolutionary implications. At the same time, they point out that the human eye is still very well adapted. Uh, we can't say that in the current situation it's become maladaptive. Um, it still works. So that what uh, Irons uh, argues is we ought to take a case-by-case -case approach looking at each adaptation, relating that adaptation to a specific adaptively relevant environment, and when we're talking about things being disrupted so that we can't observe current survival value, we should similarly take a case-by-case -case approach and determine how much disruption has occurred and whether, in fact, maladaptation has followed. So let's summarize here. Evolutionary psychology, a key concept there has been the EEA, and a key argument has been that evolved behaviors may not be adaptive in the contemporary world. So we can't use the current outcome of those behaviors to understand why they evolved. Whereas human behavioral ecology stresses adaptively relevant environments in the plural. And here the argument is that adaptiveness depends on the specific behavior and environment and we can't make the general argument about the EEA that evolutionary psychologists got in the habit of making. Now this might reflect as well this uh, disagreement between the anthropologists and the psychologists, just different traditions of research. And of course, uh, psychology has this long tradition of experimental research in labs associated uh, famously with B.F. Skinner and his boxes for manipulating the behavior of rats. Whereas anthropologists, and this includes current human behavioral ecologists, they're much more quantitative and much more sim systematic and careful in getting their data. Uh, but the tradition of field research that they follow is one established by social cultural anthropologists, and that's a very different tradition of observing particularly traditional societies firsthand.
So it might be that part of what's behind the collision that occurred between the psychologists and anthropologists is just that they come from different uh, traditions. But if they have those points of agreement about a natural science approach and an evolutionary approach, they also agree that culture is a thin veneer over genetic adaptations that are old, and neither the human behavioral ecologists nor evolutionary psychologists are the, all that interested in cultural adaptations. Instead, they focus their explanations of human behavior on human nature. Thank you for listening.